I do believe that Brent Modi is on decline. Uh, as you know, and everyone knows, Mr. Modi had almost nothing to do with Haryana elections. The simple fact is, and that's, that's a fact, it's not interpretation. Uh, you know, we were on this program, Rahul and I, with you, what, four or five months ago, where you got uh, 2024 Lok Sabha spot on when everyone else got it wrong. This time you've got Haryana wrong, along with everyone else. What went wrong? I don't know, Rajdeep. Uh, honestly, I'm completely stumped. As you know, in the morning when we were discussing on this very show, even by that time, even when early trends started coming, I was reasonably confident that it's going to be Congress victory, although I had clearly opted out of the election forecasting game. Uh, but for more than a month, I've been saying it's a foregone conclusion. Congress is ahead. It's only a question of the margin of Congress's victory. Um, so I really don't know. Uh, elections and democracy uh, teaches us humility, not just to the netas, but also to those who observe and write about it. So yes, it's a lesson in humility. Um, all I can say is that what I said was not out of thin air. Look, in Haryana, Congress, uh, BJP always does worse in assembly elections as compared to the Lok Sabha election. This happened in 2014. It happened in 2019. Expectation was that the same would happen this time. And if it happened, BJP would be out and Congress would clearly win. Uh, it was also backed by field experience. I traveled. So did you. I'm sure uh, Rahul must have also traveled. Uh, and I came back with an absolutely distinct f uh, sense from the field that it's uh, Congress, that BJP is out. And I honestly do not know of any observer, uh, you may know some, but uh, not even those who are sympathetic to the BJP, who said after traveling in Haryana that BJP is ahead, that BJP may form the government. Uh, this was, of course, endorsed by exit polls, because I can't think of a single exit poll, which even in its minimum, uh, projections for the Congress said it could get less than 45 uh, seats. So, so what, all I so said what was not have, in thin air. So, but clearly no, so this what was could wrong. Have, uh, you're right, so it did come think. out of thin air. But uh, what, what could have gone wrong? Because when I look at vote share, both the parties are identical vote share around 39%. But the BJP with 39% is actually up compared to uh, uh, 2019 in vote share and also in seats. Congress up by 11% vote share, but up in seats by just 6 was it psychology, the arithmetic of an election in Haryana? Was it that split in the smaller parties' independence or the consolidation of the non jat vote while the Congress became, was perceived as a jat driven party? Uh, Rajdeep, the fact that Congress has the same vote share as the BJP is a very small consolation for the Congress. Uh, this can happen in elections that you can get, you get equal, degree, equal share of votes, but one party gets substantially more seats. So there's nothing very, very unusual about it and nothing to complain about. This can happen. This has happened to the Congress. Uh, the expectation that all of us had was that Congress would be ahead by at least five percentage point. Clearly, that did not happen. Two possible ways of looking at it. First, of course, we should begin by assuming that we were wrong. Everyone went there and got it wrong. Well, so what? Improve your understanding. It's counterintuitive. Well, change your intuition. Improve your intuition. I've been trying to do that since the morning. And the one thing that strikes me is possibly this. Could it be that uh, the undercurrent which we failed to capture related to the JART versus non-JART question? Could it be? This is something we have known. It's not. It wasn't a top secret. We knew about it. But I thought this is not going to play out for the third time. On the ground, I did not see intensity at all of this question. But the BJP has been stoking JAT versus non-JAT question. Very obviously, they've been doing so. Uh, and it could well be a repeat of what happened in Uttar Pradesh in 2022. Kisan Andolan had happened. Samajwadi Party appeared to be ahead. But the BJP successfully managed to give this message. If Samajwadi Party comes back, it will be a rule of Yadavs and you know what would happen and so on. And that stuck till 2024 when Akhilesh Yadav went out of his way to remove this. That stuck to him. Could it be that something similar may have happened in Haryana? Could, could it, could it that also be Yogendraji uh, just uh, plain hubris and overconfidence on the part of the Congress? That narrative. Because Congress and its entire eco-chamber seemed so convinced uh, that, that they were winning, 
that uh, they didn't even examine for a moment what happened in Chhattisgarh or Madhya Pradesh under similar circumstances in Chhattisgarh where the Congress was convinced they were winning in a tactical head-on-head -head fight with the BJP. Ultimately, they ended up losing. So hubris and overconfidence, you think, had a role to play in this uh, spectacular Congress defeat? Uh, well, if there was eco chamber, I must confess I was part of that because I also believed it. So I cannot now step out and say, well, they did not know. I mean, the fact is no one had this sense. Um, and uh, if there was hubris, you have to say, because of hubris, they took these one, two, three wrong steps. That's what we need to get into. Uh, but I must mention something else because I would be failing in my duty if I did not. And therefore, I wanted to say all this before that. This evening, Congress party has held a press conference and has said something serious, which neither Congress nor the BJP has ever said. They said they do not accept these results. Now, that's a very serious thing. They have come up with evidence. I have reviewed that evidence in the case of one constituency, Narnol in Mahindragar. The allegation is specifically this, that there were EVMs which when opened had 99% charge, which should not be the case. And the allegation, and that's something that I have looked at, is that in those booths where the EVM had 99% unusual charge, that is where Congress's vote difference with BJP is much higher. That is to say, those booths have somewhat counterintuitively gone against the Congress. So that's one constituency. Congress in its press conference has said that they have many such things from Panipat and from Hisar. They have promised that by tomorrow they would bring this evidence. I would also, while not at all taking away from our responsibility, from our mistakes and wanting to improve it, I would also wait for that evidence from Congress. The duty is on Congress to bring it out and the responsibility, the onus is also on the Election Commission of India to properly respond to it, not but just that, respond that sounds like a loser's lament, Yogendra Ji. Elections should be fair and sealed, should be seen to be fair. Sir, when an EVM is sealed, you don't know what is inside that EVM. You don't know who's vote hai, kaha se aaya. So that is very difficult. You can't, without opening the EVM, you don't know. So that just sounds like a loser's lament. When they had 99 seats in the Lok Sabha, nobody was cribbing about EVMs not being opened properly or the EC not doing his job. Just on the day the Congress loses, suddenly democracy is in danger, EVMs are being manipulated, and when they do well, then everything is hunky dory. That's really not fair, sir. Uh, Rahul, you are speaking to someone who has written an article 10 days ago saying EVM manipulation issue should be put to rest that we should not make that into a central issue. Incidentally, what's being talked about today is not software manipulation of EVM. What they are talking about is, without saying so, is the possibility of replacement of EVM. Now, it's not easy to replace EVM because there are signatures involved, etc. So there is an onus on the Congress to put this uh, evidence in public domain. And there is onus on the, EV, e, uh, on the EC to explain it. Do remember, Rahul, that Congress has lost many elections, but Congress has not said what it has said in the press conference today, to my mind, earlier. So if a national party says it, I would take it seriously. I would wait for the evidence. I would not treat it as one more because we talked about Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. I don't remember Congress saying what it has said today. So I would therefore wait for some evidence to come. And if there is an evidence, you know, the we should I'm also saying, look into that. All I'm the saying reason is Yogendra wait for until evidence. Now, no, until now, you too have always said, let's not be skeptical of EVMs. It cannot be that when, when we win, EVMs are okay. When we lose, we have a problem. You've always said that there is no evidence that EVMs have been fudged, even in the Lok Sabha elections, when others were saying there could be question marks over EVMs. You disregarded it. You've, you've not been an EVM skeptic. Are you telling me that this evidence you actually believe is making you an EVM skeptic suddenly? Uh, no, Rajdeep. I'm, all I'm saying is here is some, someone has come up with a concrete instance and it's not about EVM tempering. It's not about uh, that software tempering or any such thing. It's a slightly different traditional old style issue. It's almost like changing the ballot box. Uh, it's that kind of an issue. Someone has come up with a concrete ending. So here is an election which is very, where the outcome is very counterintuitive, not just for Congress supporters, for everyone. Uh, and then there is this allegation. The least it deserves is addressing it. I'm not yet saying Congress's allegations are correct. We should not believe it. The onus should be on the Congress to provide solid evidence. I have seen one constituency. And if what I've been given by the candidate uh, is uh, correct, then it does raise question because the difference in one set of booths and the other set of booths is almost, uh, in one set of booths, he trails by 12%. 
in the other set of booths he trails by 24 percent now that's a very serious difference do you think not uh, tying up with the aam aadmi party for the congress was a big if mistake these are verified we should because there are lots of tactical things that happened on the ground the data intelligence I unit just put out a visualization sir the congress lost 14 seats to the uh, bjp in haryana where the defeat margin was less than the vote secured by the second runner up party 10 of these are independents three inld and one bsp so there's lots that happened in terms of election management engineering uh, ground offensive which the bjp did better which is also part of the reason why they're on uh, top and the congress is behind today um i agree i think this is an interesting possibility we should see it someone said congress rebels i checked and only in two places you have congress rebels uh, congress's official rebels uh, who have cost them an election uh, aam aadmi party i'm not sure if they have substantial vote share which was transferable to the congress um, i don't think they had that in the case of inld and bsp that's a very they are a serious contender they have a substantial chunk of votes but was there a possibility of an alliance with INLD and PSP? I'm not sure there was that possibility. Uh, so yes, certain things could be improved, and especially there would be questions about ticket distribution. Maharashtra now, more than any other state, will decide. Rajdeep, your state. I, it's even, you know, you, uh, Yogendra Yadav, you saw what happened in your home state of Haryana. I'm not going to predict anything anymore. I've been once bitten Lok Sabha, twice bitten now Haryana. I have decided I am three times shy. I will only watch what happens in Maharashtra and see the various ulat fairs and somersaults that now take place over the next six weeks. But you are right. Maharashtra now becomes more important than ever before. It will set the agenda at the end of 2024. Sir, agenda really... set? Ho gaya. No, I Haryana don't think so. Set the agenda. No, 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 I don't think so. I, no, why not? I will tell you why, Rahul. You know, this is the problem we have. We go, and I think, I, 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 I admit in all humility to be as guilty as anyone. I think we tend to make instant judgments. Haryana election, as we've seen with the vote shares, very, very close. One party has won. Big day for the BJP, no doubt about it. But I think the agenda for every election, Rahul, is very Almost different. Certain. And therefore, because I think Maharashtra is so much more complex and complicated than a Haryana is, in many other ways. Six no, no, part, but look at the fact... I think Yog momentum is with the BJP. But we've I'm got Yogendraji here. Yogendraji was saying earlier, and with no disrespect to him, that, you know, Brian Modi is on a decline, that the opposition has the momentum, that this will signal the further decline. You know, if Yogendra Ji is still around, do you want to take back some of that? Because that panditri around, you know, Brian Modi being in decline, that it almost being certain that in 2029 the opposition would come to power, that these are the last five years of the Modi Sarkar. If after two terms of being in power in Haryana they can win, despite all this anti-incumbency, then all that panditri about Brian Modi and Brian BJP being in decline really goes out of the window. Um... I do believe that Brian Modi is on decline. Uh, as you know and everyone knows, Mr. Modi had almost nothing to do with Haryana elections. The simple fact is, and that's, that's a fact, it's not interpretation. Mr. Modi was not projected in the Haryana election at all. From BJP's own holdings, he almost disappeared to a tiny corner with Nayib Saini. He did not address meeting. BJP people themselves were very shy. And if we do a strict comparison now, uh, from Lok Sabha election to Lok Sabha election, Mr. Modi managed to lose 30 points lead, while his compatriots in the BJP state unit have managed to retain and improve. I don't know how that becomes Mr. Modi's success. Uh, you know, that... At the same time, it is true that because BJP has the momentum, because, as I, as I said, Jammu and Kashmir's verdict cannot wash away Haryana's shock. So, yes, the momentum is the B. The I'll tell you how the the G, it's a victory for Brian Modi and for the BJP. That's very Because let's now. imagine, let me draw a cricketing analogy. Imagine you've got Sachin Tendulkar as captain of the Indian team, and Tendulkar is your most fearsome batsman. Suddenly, at Sharjah Sandstorm, he helps you win, and he's the one carrying your team through. In the next match, he doesn't go out and do all the heavy lifting. The team does, the Sangathan, the Karikarta, the ground management, the booth management, the Prana Pramukhs, they do their job. It is still Brand Modi and the BJP which is uh, at the helm and you've got them being able to win without Prime Minister Modi having to do the heavy lifting. That's an even bigger victory for the Sangathan and for the BJP than to have one person carrying you to victory on his shoulders. Uh, you are absolutely right, taking your own metaphor forward. In the second match, if Sachin Tendulkar did not have to bat and the team wins, that would be a victory for Team India, 
that would be a victory for the organization. In the parallel, it will be a victory for the BJP party. BJP takes the credit. Uh, but I and you were trying to distinguish between brand BJP and brand Modi. I do not see how that logic improves Mr. Modi's performance for the time being. But as all of us might agree, the real test comes in Maharashtra and Jharkhand. Let's wait for that. If you look at this from your side, आपका left hand आपको B के जैसे दिखेगा और right hand आपको D के जैसे दिखेगा. B and D. B for थोड़ी मज़ेदार रखिए.